Good afternoon. I am Ronaldo McKenzie, and welcome to another episode of the Neoliberal Round podcast. Today is Street Vibe, Pulse of the Street, and we haven't had one of these in a while. And today, we I had an interview, and I'm going to be sharing it with you. An interview with someone who I'm going to be calling Jay, and I share tips on how to ace an exam. But before I get into that, into that interview, I will just want to announce that the Neoliberal Round podcast on Monday, May 2, which is next week, Monday, we will be interviewing John Anthony Castro, the 2024 U.S. presidential candidate. Now, uh, who is John Anthony Castro? And many of you, if you are not aware of who he is, he, John Anthony Castro was born into a working class military family stationed at the U.S. military base in Germany and eventually graduated from Georgetown University Law Center. And this is important, with over $250,000 in student loan debt. Against all odds, he preserved or persevered. And this is important because one of the questions I want to put to... uh, John is what were your goals did you always have dreams or desires to become president to become a president or an entrepreneur or an attorney and the next question is what were you what were your challenges to achieving or coming to the point to coming to this point and how were you able to navigate them Because it's important to ask that question as we get into this episode of Street Vibe, where I interviewed a gentleman, a gentleman, a young man who is from the, from Philadelphia, who is from a particular vulnerable community, from a working class family, a family that is vulnerable and marginalized and someone who has had to navigate life and had a kind of experience and also had dreams and visions, visions and dreams like Barack Obama, visions and dreams like Mr. John Anthony. And I've spoken with several people who said that they've had dreams and they've had goals. And this particular interview with this particular young man, he said he had, he's had dreams, he's had goals, but he's had to put them on the back burner so that he can ens- so as to ensure or in order to ensure that he has a roof over his head or he has to pay bills in order to make ends meet so and in fact one of the things that that will that as if you listen to the to the interview in the to, to this episode in its entirety the young man went on to say the the man went on to say he wanted to be a realtor. He wanted to sell houses. That's what his dream. And he said that he's had to put them on the back burner. And I did go on to ask him what about... Um, he, it, it was revealed that he went to college. He went to Temple University and dropped out because of financing. And I asked him what about financing? And he said, well, he, you know, he didn't want to have uh, a, a, a huge debt when he was finished. So he decided that he would rather drop out and then join the military as a way of probably trying to get to school. But I'll, I'll allow you to listen to the interview. And, and, and this provides a great contrast as you look at two separate individuals. And, um, and one of the things that we want to explore, the issue of student loan and the issue of debt and the issue of education. And to be honest, um, I was interested. I, I went on Mr. Castro's page John and at johncastro.com and um, he said he said as a fiscal conservative all of my legislative proposals cut spending and reduce the federal budget while improving services if it sounds too good to be true it's because government bureaucrats have been doing it wrong for years they think they can solve issues by throwing billions at the problem entrepreneurs instead Focus on how to run things more efficiently and effectively. 
So we want we want to delve into this. The, the issue of the ability to be able to reconcile the two, to be able to be able to provide services, social services, or to improve federal budget, or to, sorry, how do we balance that? And um, how, 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 and uh, what, what, what is it that, that he has, what solutions he is able, he has, he finds workable to help balance this, this improving of social services while at the same time cutting spending and reducing the federal budget. So, and this is an, this is interesting. And, um, and so, so I invite you to listen to the interview today and also listen, the, in, I will also provide in this particular interview tips on how to ace an exam, which I have found to be useful um, as an academic, as a, as, a, as a professor, as a tutor, someone who has taught college students before, someone who has taken various kinds of exams and so on. So I have, I'm going to share with you tips on how to ace an exam, how to pass an exam. And that also, and this particular interview with this young man is very interesting. And I apologize for the feedback that you will, some of the feedback that you will hear. I apologize for that. But, um, but I am going to also, the, the, the conversations and the dialogue that I had with this particular young man is also available in the detail section of this podcast. If you scroll over to, to details, or you can go to my website where I have this on an art. I have the discussions as an article in the neoliberal post at the, at Ronaldo C. McKenzie.com. Ronaldo C. McKenzie.com. So thank you for, um, for joining us. And, um, at the end of this, you will hear the interview. a bank burning dream my whole life. I always thought I was going to be like a lawyer or something and do houses on the side. I always had to effectuate you know, building houses and modern, remodeling houses. Probably one of my favorite things to do. And then, um, you know, it's best to stop. You know, I was, you know, went to school. I was doing other stuff. I was, you know, high school changing, middle school changing. We start hanging around the wrong crowds. So you, you take the eye. Some people, not everybody, take the eye off the ball. They take the eye off the ball. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, it don't matter what you are, age you are, you can always still, you know, achieve, achieve what you want to do. You just got to, you know, stay focused, which I'm not focused right now. So I got to, you know, get myself together so I can be focused. So is it, okay, so you're saying that you have, you, it is one, one of the reasons why you have not realized your goal is that of becoming a real person, that you are not focused. And also because you are busy trying to keep a real so wait, I, so wait, I, so, but are you not focused or are you focused? Because you need to you are focused. When you, not, when you got a roof over your head, when you need to, 
make sure when you need to make sure your bills are paid and stuff like that. That some of that stuff get put to the push to the back burner sometimes. You know, and you know, when you can get to it, you get to it. If you can't, you can't. So you are focused. I'm focused, but I'm just not like I, I go in and out. I'm not 100 percent committed to it. Put it like that. But you, and how can you be committed to it when you spend most of your time busy trying to make ends meet? You can't. So you push on the back burner when you have time. You work on it. And how long have you been busy trying to make ends meet? Um, probably like six months. Probably six, seven months. I'm not sure. You know, I, but how old are you? You're like 29. Yeah. All right. You have. Been you have had a dream since you left high school, like before high school, before you left even high school, you always wanted to be a lawyer or anything. So you have been, how long have you been in New York? Yeah, I went to school and everything. I went to start a college, or, you know, went to Temple, you know, dropped out because I couldn't afford it, you know, joined the military, did four years, you know. I could always go to school, then You went to Temple and dropped out of Temple? Yeah. And wait, hold on. And you said you drop up because you couldn't afford what didn't you use? What about financial aid? That's financial aid. I didn't want to be in debt. You d- oh, you you prefer, you did not want to take financial aid? No, I was already on the $10,000. So imagine if I did four years, no four years. That would have been like thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. Who wants to pay that? Oh, okay. So we can get the military to pay for that shit for free. Oh wait, so okay, fine. So when you so you dropped out and joined the military, so when you joined the military did you go back to school? No. I just you know, when you're in the military now it's just like <laughs> you you get um I, I don't know what other people say about the military bro, but it's they pay you really good in there. You know, you get a lot of money in there. Um a nice handsome check. You don't gotta pay rent nowhere, so it's like you keep keeping all that money to your damn self. That's what some people don't know about it. But when you finish the military, don't they uh, don't don't they have a program where you they'll pay for your schooling and college education yeah you can i didn't take heed of that stuff when i was in i was more so running ripping around with my friends hanging with strip clubs and having fun like you know and then on top of that you got schooling on your own so you'd be like damn i gotta do this school and then get out and do it then i don't want to do more schooling after this you know what i'm saying so because you know in the military you always got you got your school in there so it's like it's not just 100 percent you go in if you train you got to go to school in there. You got to learn your job. Certain people got schoolwork, you know, where you got homework and all that shit. I'm saying, I'm saying, okay, after you finish the military, no, you still had your no. dreams of becoming a realtor, did you? Yeah, I still had it. I just, you know, I I started enjoying my, uh, the other field. Like, I got to pick up a trade in IT, so it was like, you know, I started doing that next. You know, when people always get to in, in the private sector, which I did really well. Oh, okay, so you were doing other things and you were doing stuff. And, um, yeah. you know, um, I think where I fell off at, you know, I got locked up before, so it was like, you know, I got locked up and then, um, you know, it's hard to get a job once you get a record on you. And that's the honest truth. Honest, that's the really the honest truth. Okay, so you all But I was good all my life. I was, I was well off all my life until, like, I went to jail. Yes. For what? Why did you go to jail? That's something I don't want to disclose. But, uh. That's fine. Okay, fine. So I. Was it something that you did that was really bad that affected your whole life? That's something I'm not going to school with you. It's just, you know, I did something wrong. I made a mistake to society. I fixed it. I worked on it. And now, you know, I'm a better person today. Okay, cool. And um, so now, as you think about what you want to do for the future and how you're going to and realize your dreams and your goals, what are you going to do then? Because how are you going to be able to reconcile you, you trying to keep uh, well, to keep just, a roof over your head and to honestly, and I just gotta, I, to honestly, I just probably got this past the real estate test. I took the class already. I just got past the test now at this point. Once I pass the test, I should be okay. But that test is hard. Uh, excuse me, My, that test is kind of hard, you know. And, uh, I'm trying to. Oh, what. so you okay? So you are you have started. Um, you you have started the process. I've been started. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. And um, so what what's next up? So now so you've completed the classes and um, you are about to sit the exam. Yeah, I just gotta take my exam. To, uh, you know, for the third time, second time actually. Oh, why why? Okay, you fail the exam. What happens? I don't know. I got fifty. <laughs> <laughs> 
what you is know? what is not doing well but I can help you to I, I mean I can tell you what you I can talk to you a secret that how you can have, how you can aim the exam. How can you do that? Well first of all, after you have when you when you have an exam like this, a multiple choice exam, it's important for you to do the exam as quick as quick quickly as possible, soon after you have completed the course. Do not wait three months, two months. And if you should do it within the within the month, within that same month. And just so you know, because a lot of these questions and so on, they get updated a lot. And sometimes right. exam is based on certain information that you were exposed to. So you right. have to ensure that you do the exam. And not only that, for how the brain works. Okay, the brain works a particular way. Um, you you know, you want to train the brain a certain way. If you, okay, will you shock the brain in a particular way? Right. Easy for the brain to go to relax and to go back to what it was because it's like when you learn when you study for an, uh, for a multiple choice exam like this, you are shocking the brain in a sense with information, and then after two or three weeks you stop and you wait another three four weeks to do the exam. The brain goes. The brain is not as and just you know, you're also exercising the brain, you're sharpening the brain when you're doing this. So the brain is now relaxed and it's no longer at that place and you want to sit an exam. And the next thing you do now, after you, when you complete, when you have completed reading the book, you do not, you should not read the book anymore. You should do as many practice exams practice papers and real exams where and where you get the results and then you look at and you look that, at that was my uh that was my next plan. And then you look at where you did one and then and then you can read the question the area where you fell and then you go back to another question. The way that they read the second do another question do another that you just do question papers. Telling you. Because what it does is that it's not it's not only knowing the information, it's knowing all the information. Obtaining it. Obtaining it. Like, you know, learn like you know not knowing it, but you know what I'm saying, like um They set up the question so that you fail to keep people out. Right. So you have to find out that you have to, it's sometimes three questions that are right and one is wrong and it's the wrong question, it's the right answer. The, the, the important thing is getting the right answer, not the correct answer, the right answer, and the right answer could be the incorrect answer, the difference between the, what is right and what is correct, and the multiple choice, okay, and that's the issue where people don't realize, that's the issue of studying Do you know the discipline with, with, with the discipline of all but then practicing your understanding of test taking? Understand how these questions are asked. Okay. That's very important. So that's how you read, read the book, read the book, read the book. Uh 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 start. Just do practice papers, man, and develop your understanding of of how the questions are asked and sometimes it's the question that is arrived at through the a process of elimination. Okay? The process of elimination is important. So, you know, it's the most sometimes the most obvious answer is the wrong answer. Okay? What is obvious so it's not it's not looking for what is obvious. Sometimes you have to look at what is out of place or sometimes you have to look at the wrong answer. Because you know sometimes the wrong, ink, sorry, the the right answer is the incorrect answer. You know so, so that is important. So that's what you that's why you do a lot of practice papers, and then um and you only read when you have to when after the each practice paper and you look at the area that you didn't do well on, 
I say, okay, that's the chapter that was the area that I need to read. And just read that quickly. And then you go back to another practice. That's it. That's all you do. I'm telling you. I'm, you know, I'm going to write a book on... Um, How to pass the test? You will pass. If you follow my instructions, you will pass. You will not fail again. I'm telling you that. If you follow my instructions, you, and then you admit that you have to be focused. You know, when I... I did this issue with six and pass. First, I did it. I did it myself. I finished ten. I did it. 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 I know exactly what to do with the practice. You know, I, 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 why you don't ever help me study since you know? Well, I didn't talk to anybody for a week. No, I'm saying, like, in, in general, like, yeah. I'm just saying, in general, since you know I want to do that, and you know I, I need study habits, you like, all right, you know, you're my old head, you're supposed to be like, you know. Because people don't, um, people don't understand, people don't get to know people in a real Deep level sometimes. People only know people at the You know me for over But I mean, I mean, in other words, my skill is what I can help you with. Like, sometimes I tell people, I'm not That's here. what I've been needing to come from. Welcome back. Thank you for listening to the Neoliberal Round podcast and with the interview with Jay. That was Street Vibe, talking about the difficulty of realizing goals and, of course, how to ace an exam. Continue to share this show with your friends. And remember the interview next week with John Anthony Castro, the 2024 U.S. presidential candidate. And send us a support by going to HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash anchor dot fm slash the neoliberal forward slash support the neoliberal corporation serving the world today to solve tomorrow's challenges take care